guitar wishes and your guitar wish of the day. This is Lee coming to you once again from beautiful downtown Lincoln, North Carolina. The clips you just saw were of the lovely Tiffany Ash. And how are you? I'm doing great, Lee. Glad to be here at Guitar Wishes. Oh, uh, awesome. Thank you so much for stopping in. Uh, tell me about the clips that we just saw. Well, um, that is actually live footage from my show at Opryland. We did the countdown for Opryland's New Year's Eve this year, Big Night Nashville, and they are having us back again this year. So I'm pretty excited oh, about wow. that. Oh, yeah. wow. But some really big stuff is coming up. I'm on the thing. It was talking about I'm a Grammy voter and also a country singer, songwriter, recording artist. Right, I go right. back and forth between North Carolina and Nashville right now. Right. So lots of traveling, lots of exciting stuff happening. It sounds like it. How does that happen? How do you get chosen? Tell me about the steps to you know, to be leading the uh, the New Year's Eve festivities there. Oh my goodness. Well, I actually, there is an entertainment company out of North Carolina that are very close with the entertainment company that runs Big Night National. Okay. And, you know, I've done events for the one in North Carolina for years, like literally since I was like 13, they booked me for one of my first air shows, you know, okay. like, um, and back then that was like a big step for me. And it just, it gradually gets bigger and bigger as you gain more experience and you know your songwriting is different and the songs that I would write whenever I was 13 and 14 are obviously are different than what I'd write today and so but it's all just a process so right and well you talked about writing songs at yeah. that young of you know a lot yeah. of singers are not writing their own music and you're writing right. at 13 years old right. tell me about uh, the beginnings and how you get to where you are today Man, it's been a long time. It's funny because I always talk about, I feel like I was just like born to sing, you mm -hmm. know. Um, everybody else, whenever they're little, is, you know, doing all their thing. And my thing was standing in front of the mirror in my princess dress yeah. and performing like nobody was watching, even though the entire house was watching. Right. So um, that's where I kind of started. But whenever I was six, my mom was like, all right, this is what she loves. And so I started doing big churches. Um baseball stadiums, like playing and singing out, that kind of thing. Right. And I joined choir, of course, just to get like the basic fundamentals of music. But it's right. just something that I always innately loved, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then whenever, and I always also loved to write poetry, but that was like separate for me, you know what I mean? Sure. Like I love my music and I love my poetry. Right. And so then I was 11 and I picked up guitar. Mm -hmm. And it's like, for me, that was the bridge for both my poetry and my music. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like, I can write my own songs and they can tell my story now. Like, that's that's what I'm meant to do, you know. Sure. Those are both my passions, like, combined. So right. that's really how I got started, and I've just been going ever since, you know. Well, tell me about playing guitar. Uh, you said you picked up a guitar at 11. I did. And I did. Uh, what was your first guitar? Do you remember? Oh, my gosh. It was a black Yamaha, and it right. was so... I still have it upstairs in my closet, but actually probably even before that, like I fiddle with guitar probably whenever I was in like second grade and I had a little nylon string, you know sure. how that goes. You start oh, out absolutely. really, really we little. On the, yeah. Oh yeah. You got to start on the nylons. And uh, so then I, I got the black Yamaha and that was my first songwriter's guitar. And now I play a Martin and of course, thank you guys for letting me borrow this beautiful <laughs> custom J45 Gibson. It's um, It sounds so good. But uh, no, I started, and I actually started taking from a bluegrass player because right. I am from, I was raised in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Okay. And that is like the foothills of the Appalachians. Sure. They, I mean, it's just bluegrass is all over up there. Bluegrass so. country, absolutely. Yeah, so I started taking from him, and so I've, you know, ever since I've just been going. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and so... Uh, Bluegrass. Now, was that an impact on how you write today? Oh, of course. You know, I I love it because everything that you are exposed to is a part of you. And I loved growing up in Winston because you had the Appalachian folk music, but it's also a very artsy town very much aside so. from that. So, like, I mean, I was exposed to, like, whenever I was in choirs, we did everything from, like, modern pop music, like, rearranged, right. to classic opera. Mm -hmm. And so I had so much of a wide variety and whenever you're exposed to that, you hear so many different stories and so many different perspectives Right. that that is the crux of songwriting Absolutely. is your personal perspective. And, you know, whenever you write a song, the hopes is that you write this song that means something to you, but not only does it mean something to you, it means something to somebody else. Sure. And so being exposed to all of that from a young age and other people that were doing the same kind of things that I was wanting to do, I mm -hmm. mean, it's, it's invaluable. You know? Well, take me back to 13, 14, 15 yeah. years old. You know, if, if I was to look at your music collection, <laughs> what, are you, what are you listening to to, oh, help, to help drive this songwriting passion? Oh, goodness. I was 
Of course, I love Taylor Swift. She was one of the first to come out that was like, you know, a woman in country that was, I, I literally, I remember turning on CMT for one of the first times whenever I was younger and just really noticing like, wow, she's not all that much older than me. Right. And she's doing this and she's like, that. that's so cool. And so I listened to a lot of her. I listened to a lot of Alison Krauss because... Oh, I love her voice, but that's the bluegrass in me, right? Allison is amazing, yeah. <laughs> She's amazing, and uh, interestingly enough, Avril Lavigne. I loved Avril Lavigne yeah. as a kid, um, but, you know, I think that they all took very different perspectives, but the human experience in itself is such a constant thing. Like, we all go through heartbreak. We all go through sure. the phases of love. We all go through nostalgia. You know, we go through all of that, but your personal perspective and the way in which you say that can make so much of a difference like for somebody else so sure. like my goal whenever I write a song is for somebody out there to be like oh my gosh that is not something that I would have said but that is exactly how I'm feeling right now right and so at different points like that was for me that was Avril Lavigne that was Allison Krauss that was Taylor Swift that right. was um you know I love Brad Paisley stuff yeah and I, I really appreciate Luke Combs now too because right. he is out there and he is writing his own stuff he's mm -hmm. like this is my story yeah, yeah and just all of the artists that you mentioned yeah. are true songwriters they are you know writing everything they do true and uh it, even crossing genres there with Avril you know Avril yeah. does her own stuff oh, as well yeah. oh yeah um it's, it's really interesting to hear um, and even Luke, you know, he's from right down the road. Oh, too. no, he yeah. is. He's from Asheville. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. It's funny because uh, we we do, or, uh, goodness, how, how long ago was that now? I guess it was only about two and a half years ago. We were all doing writer's rounds in Nashville at, like, mm -hmm. the Tin Roof Nashville. Sure. But, like, we were, like, right up on stage with each other. It was kind of yeah. cool. I was going to ask if you ever attend any of those, oh, yeah. you know, the round tables, everybody getting together and sharing stuff. Oh, yeah. And in Nashville, it's really cool because what they'll do is, like, for songwriters, mm -hmm. they have what they call writer's rounds. And so, like, you bring your original music. There's, like, three of you guys. You sit on a stool and you share your original songs like right from the horse's mouth, right, you know? Right. And so it's just a fascinating, it's kind of like a culture within itself, you know? Sure. So it's great to be a part of that and great to kind of hear these songs straight from the songwriter's perspective because like, oh goodness, what song was I listening to not too long ago from the actual writer themselves? Oh, I think it was, um, goodness, I can't believe it's escaping me. Anyways, I was listening to the songwriter themselves sing it and the heartbreak was so evident and overpowering in the way that he sang it that I was like, man, you should have sang that. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. man, it was so good, you know? But uh, just having that different perspective, I mean, I think it's a blessing to be able to go and like pull from these other writers because sure. that's inspiration for me too. Yeah, you know? do you ever feel any pressure going up against some of these really seasoned, not that you're not seasoned already, yeah. uh, you know, all these seasoned songwriters? You know, it's a different perspective because as opposed to like thinking about like I'm going up against these people, like I'm there to learn from these people. Right. You know, these are the people that like I look up to and that like, you know, just to be in their presence and to be able sure. to ask them questions, you know, mm -hmm. and it's great because I've opened for like the Oak Ridge Boys and um, I've been around Luke Combs a lot. Um, so the Oak Ridge Boys, Luke Combs, um, gosh, um, goodness, Brothers Osborne. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not a like competition. A, no, it's, no. It's more of a family. Right. And at, at one point, like I have never been around an artist that was just like, super stuck up and like not willing to like talk to you and like right. be, everybody that I've opened for thankfully so far has been so nice so supportive and they get it because they've been there at one point like sure. about two weeks ago I'm part of CMT's mentorship program mm -hmm. so they've picked me to be a part and they bring us in and they kind of mentor us through the stages of being an independent artist and sure. you know we're they're kind of grooming us for that next step mm -hmm. but um they brought in Sarah Evans. Oh, Sarah's amazing. And, yeah. Oh my gosh. Like I listened, that is another one that I listened to so much during my childhood. Mm -hmm. And she was just such an inspiration for me. Right. And they say, they always say like, don't meet your heroes. You're going to be so disappointed. <laughs> and I've got to say, she was like one of the sweetest people I've ever met. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I, I look up to that. Like that is a genuine person. Right. Like you can just tell from the way she interacts with people and mm -hmm. the advice that she gives that, I mean, she is there for you and she is being genuine. And it's just, when you see that, and those are the people that you look up to. It's hard not to be like just completely like in awe and inspired. Absolutely. And that's kind of the perspective I take is like, it's 
uh, something to soak in, you know? Sure. And even if you have a bad experience, like you learn from that, you know, like that right. don't be that way to other people, you know? Right. So right. no matter the experience, it's the way that you take it and the way that you soak it in. Absolutely. And well, we've talked about songwriting a lot. I'd love to hear something. If oh. you've got something to play for us. Oh yeah, definitely. This one is a, a song of mine called You Haul It. I've actually got eight new songs that have not been released oh, yet wow. that I am so excited to bring to the world because mm -hmm. I've been working for the last two years on this next set of songs for this next project. And sure. I just, you know, as a songwriter, you pour you pour your heart out into these. Absolutely. So I'm excited to share this with you guys. This one's called You Holly. Let's hear it. Told myself that you'd change, finally treat me right. Be the man I needed and not screw up this time. Well, baby, here we are in the same old sorry place. You've struck out all your chances All I gotta say Is you haul it Right on out my door Baby, step on it You ain't my problem anymore You always said that I was more than you deserve Baby, you called it So baby, you haul it all right, back to the red carpet. That was amazing. Great job. <laughs> and I love <laughs> some of the you. new stuff is going to be incredible. When can we look forward to seeing some of this? We are working on this project now. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that I'm really excited about. We'll be releasing it all digitally very, very soon. So you guys keep up at TiffanyAshtonMusic.com. You heard that. Yes. TiffanyAshtonMusic.com. That's right. You guys find me and connect there. I can't wait to connect with you guys. And uh, yeah, so we've got some really exciting announcements that are about to yeah, come out. Yeah, yeah. So. A lot of things are happening. And uh, actually, the producer producers of our new reality show have contacted a certain person, I think, oh. to be one of the characters <laughs> on our show. Uh, what have they told you? Oh my goodness, they have said that they would love for me to be a part of the Guitar Wishes team. So I am so, so excited to be joining you guys. It's going to be great. It's going to be a blast here. And you've done some radio. Uh, yes. Uh, recently. Tell me about some of that. Um, just recently, I was on the Ty Bentley show. Um, I've been on WSM Radio, which is the Opry Radio Station. Mm -hmm. I've done some things with Cumulus, so they have all been so supportive, and I sure do appreciate that. You know, I mean, as an artist, and as independent artists particularly, you know, going into radio is a little bit, you know, I mean, it's just, it's part of the process of working your music and getting it exposed and getting it to people out there who are going to relate to it. So Absolutely. I sure appreciate them and all that they've done. Yeah, and, you know, when you look at the group of people that surround you, it's a very tight knit group of people. Like even when you showed up here today, you had your family in the, in the car and you know, you're playing to thousands and you're playing to thousands of people. Thousands of people are hearing your songs on the radio and on your website, but it's a very tight knit group of people. It is. And so tell me about uh, some of your, your supporters at home. Oh my gosh. My mom has been my supporter from day one. My grandparents have always been so supportive. My grandparent, my, my grandfather passed away in January oh, wow. and uh, he was such a big supporter of me even like until like the very very end like he was on his cane and everything and he was like he also was um in a korean war veteran oh wow and uh he had lost his hearing mm -hmm. and so even though i knew that he couldn't hear a word that i was singing he'd always i'd come off stage and he'd be like tiffany you sounded beautiful oh, awesome. and i was always <laughs> just like grandpa you're That's the great. best you're the best so i miss him dearly mm -hmm. but you know um and i've got a great stepdad and a, my little brother has autism and epilepsy mm -hmm. and it's funny because a lot of times he'll be like super sound sensitive sure you know that's just part of autism and part right. of you know they experience their senses at a heightened level right. but I tell you what he comes to just, he comes to my shows and he is the first to be like go Tiffany yeah, that's and, awesome. you know just to have that in my family is amazing I also do have a manager named John Lentz and he is awesome he's Nashville based and mm -hmm. you know he's really really been behind me and I sure really, I really just appreciate having that network because it does take a village you know it does, it really does. for anybody to do what we do as singer songwriters, you Absolutely. know, it's just, it, it takes a village. It does. Well, Tiffany, thank you so much for your time. We yes. sincerely appreciate it. Looking forward to working with you on the show yes. and uh, good luck with everything coming up. We, we really are rooting for you here. Thank you so much, Lee. I'm so thankful that you guys have me on guitar wishes today and you guys be on the lookout for our new reality TV show. That's, right. that's coming out real soon. That's right. And, uh, thanks for having me. All right. For Tiffany, I'm Lee and we're out. <laughs> I'm up on the Guitar Wishes wall, y'all. I'm a part of the Guitar Wishes family. <laughs> Told myself.
yourself that you change Finally treat me right Be the man I needed And not screw up this time Well baby here we are In the same old sorry place You've struck out all your chances All I gotta say in three, two, one. After, was that my stomach or yours? I don't know. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's do it again. Three, two, one. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Guitar Wishes on both YouTube and on Facebook, guys. Check us out.